Um, we will finish this part of the water session. So we are finished talk about water, and we're going to start to talk about the ice. Okay, so there is something I want to mention. We have the slides, but I want to talk something more. So first of all, we want to talk about the ice. And you need to know number one. Ice is usually is one water molecule, which is with another four water molecules, and the, which is we call it a tetra hydro arrangement. And I'll show you, okay, tetra hydro arrangement. Uh, because of that, so the structure of the ice, right here, based on this peak figure, you can say this is hexagonal pattern, we call it. And because of that, so there is a halo space. And because of the halo space, make the density of ice is less than water. So this is about 0 0.9 gram per ml. So it's less than water, which is, you know, 1.0 gram per ml at 4 degrees Celsius. This is a reason why ice can float in in the water, and it becomes uh, ice water. And the temperature of ice water is zero degree Celsius. So standard uh, zero degree Celsius is uh, ice water, okay? Now what is the ice structure really looks like? We're not gonna draw that one. Uh, that it looks a little bit abstracted. So looks like it should be this. Okay, the middle is a water molecule, so we become these four. Okay, that's four water molecule. Now, each one of them will be looks like is uh, oxygen, hydrogen, and hydrogen. Now, what's the angle right here? The angle is 109 degrees. What's the distance? 2.76 nanometer. Okay, then we have another, let's make, draw this one a little bit large. When we draw this one a little bit large. This will be a water molecule. And then we have another, right here, okay? Now, what is the distance from here? When you see here, the distance from here is 0 0.96 nanometer. Now, what's the distance from here? This is already mentioned. This is 2 point. Now, what's the distance right here? 1.8 nanometer. Okay? That's 1.8 nanometer is a hydrogen from a water molecule to the oxygen from another water mo uh, molecule. Okay, now from the mass, or we say it's a chemistry, chemical mass standpoint, we have an oxygen. So one water molecule with four water molecules. So if there is no restriction, If no restriction, how many possible of the hydrogen arrangement in water, in ice? It is four times n. That n equals number of water molecule. But in the ice, there is a restriction. The restriction is 
two hydrogen must combine with one oxygen. Therefore, how many possibilities will generate? Is three divided by two times n hydrogen arrangement in ice? You don't have to know. We don't want to get a bottle of that. This is a like a chemical structure from the chemistry. So our textbook, we should just take the conclusions about it. If there's no restriction, let's say there is a three, uh, four water molecule in the ice. You're going to generate probably 64 possibility of hydrogen arrangements in the ice. However, there's no restriction, which means one, two hydrogen atoms has to be coupled with one oxygen. Therefore, only 1.5 times n possibility of the uh, hydrogen arrangement in the ice. Okay, so this is something I want to mention besides what we talk about ice structure. Now, I want to mention something else. Is we mentioned it before. If there is ice, let, let's say we have a snow in there, okay, in the snow. We want it to melt it. What are we going to do? We want to add a salt. We spray with the salt particles. It will be so we will be melted easily to be easily melted. So which means the melting temperature will be decreased. Now why? In our textbook, which is explained to you a little bit. So the first thing you need to know: if there is an ice generated. Let's say there is an ice crystal. This is the one is purified. Which means it's only water there. There is no any of the dust. We call it impurities. It's no impurity. It's pure ice. Now the story is, if we add salt, what is going to happen? If we add salt, this will become, the salt will be reacted with ice. Then what is going to happen? The whole crystal will be cut into different layers. Because there is an interaction between ice and salt in each of these layers. Why? Because once the ice, the water forms ice forms ice crystals, they want to be purified, which means they want to be only ice. Now you have a salt there, they try to repair you, take you out. So there is an interaction between each other. Once the interaction happens each other, they have this multiple layer. At each of these intersections, the temperature of the intersection is equals the melting temperature of ice. So what that means, which means the ice is super Cold. Oh, we say super cooling. So therefore, it will be melted. So you can see it's easily understood is if you have a salt there, the ice and the salt particle, they will be fighting with each other. Ice try to repair them out. Then they form so many layers. Each layer have an intersection. Then at that moment, the melting point of this ice is equal to the temperature of that intersection. So that means it's the same principle of supercooling. Then what happens? The ice will start to melt. It. So, usually the ice will start to melt it at about zero degrees Celsius. At this moment, this may be only minus two degrees Celsius, or for example, like today, minus four degrees Celsius. It started to melting. The reason is you salt add there, 
have this intersection, it's kind of like we are doing the supercooling. So the melting point is decreased. So the reason is the ice has to be purified. And it will be repelled, interacted with any of the impurities in this uh, in the in the formation. Okay? So that's something I want to mention. Okay, next one. This is something we want to talk about the silver slides, which use the figure uh, to explain something. Uh, actually, it's important during the food processing. Uh, I think it's very helpful. It's easier to understand when you use those things. The first thing is right here. Is a is the three phase diagram of water. So what that really talks about. Okay, well let's draw that right here. The x-axis is temperature. Okay, minus 20 degrees Celsius, that's zero. That's minus 10. That's 10 degrees Celsius and that's 20. That's x-axis, that's temperature. The y-axis right here is uh, pressure. This pressure they use millimeter mercury column. Okay, so they have uh, around here five, right here to ten, and the top is fifteen. Okay, we already know that zero degrees Celsius is a key point for the water and the ice interaction. So what we do it? They draw a curve like that, and they separate it. So they have T, B, T, A, and T, C. Okay, they do T, C, and T separately. Let's say that's T, C. And that's T, A. Okay, so they have so many lines. So what are they really talking about? This T, A line. That is called a vapor pressure line. Okay? Vapor pressure line. This TC line is melting point line or melting pressure line. This TV is sub limitation line. What is the sublimitation? Did you know in the physics? That means solid directly become vapor. Okay. This is a, a this is a, 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 a sweet piece figure. Now what's the key point here? In the food industry we are interested about is this area. Why? Approximately corresponding to the y-axis is 4.8 millimeter mercury column and approximately 6.2 mag bar, the pressure. As long as the temperature is below zero and the pressure is less than 7.8 millimeter mercury column. So, okay, so the condition is as long as temperature less than zero degrees Celsius, pressure less than 4.8 millimeter mercury column and around 6.2 meg bar, what's gonna happen? The solid will be directly become vapor. This is a principle of freezing or freeze drying. This is a principle how we make a milk powder. 
If you have a milk, we have a lactose in there. We're putting a freeze dryer, what's gonna be? All the liquid gonna come, the vapor gonna come, what they left is those a little bit of small particles, like a milk powder. That's called a dry freezing. We have those machine, because the dry freezing freezing machine, it's a little bit expensive. That's the principle behind that. Okay, so that's why this table is in, in this figure. These we don't care about all of these. Right here, this area is much important. That's dry freezing. It's the principles of dry freezing. Okay, that's what I want to talk about this one. Now, this is easily understand. Because we have a hexagonal uh, pattern, we say tetrahedral arrangement. So, the fruit products does not matter it's liquid or solid, it will be increase the volume when the temperature decreases, especially in the frozen status. This table one showed you strawberry juice, vegetable or fruits juice, strawberries. The volume will be decreased approximately 3.0 to 8.3 percentage if the temperature is decreased from 70 degree Fahrenheit to zero degree Fahrenheit. Now zero degree Fahrenheit is very low, maybe minus five degrees Celsius. 70 degree Fahrenheit about 20 degrees Celsius. So kind of from room temperature to the freezing temperature, the volume will be increased. That is not really good sometimes because we don't want the volume to be increased. When the volume increased, the texture or the quality will be decreased. So what the industry usually they do? Sometimes they add some of the sugar there. For example, they add sucrose. Because when you add in the sucrose, the volume increase, this phenomenon will be decreased or even, di or, or even gone, or even like diminished. You will see that. If with the increasing concentration of the sucrose, the volume is decreased. When the sucrose almost reach 60%, the volume will be the same, even you freeze it. Okay? And if you're more than that, 70 degrees Celsius sucrose, the volume even decreased. We don't want that. Okay? This is just a give you an example. You know really every product you're gonna add sucrose, it's gonna be very sweet. So just let you know, you can add sucrose there, the volume could be keeping. Okay, so that, that's some example. Okay, this is what we're gonna talk for a couple of slides. About the crystal, about the glass forming. A glass forming. Okay. So this is another figure. This is uh, FP. What the FP means, the textbook has not been described very well. Freezing point called the FP. Okay, now what that means? This figure like that. First thing you need to know, breathing will damage the food products, basically. Although it keeps its longer shelf life, but it will damage food products. It will be damaged for some of them cell wall, cell membrane, and uh, tissue. I talked about this earlier. If you have a beef products, you have a chicken, let's say thin. You have a chicken legs. You don't want to use it today. You put it in a freezer. Usually, we do only three months. If you freeze it more than six months or one year, you take it out, you do cooking, it's not going to be good. The tissue or the, you taste it, it's not going to be good at all. Not integrated, the tenderness or those qualities gone. Because during the freezing, 
And all that depends how you freeze it. It will generate the crystal. This is not a good stuff because this is three dimension and the regular lattice. That is not, not good. Now, the crystal formation is highly related to the freezing temperature. This is a freezing point. Just below the freezing point a little bit at this moment, this crystal formation is at the top Mr. level. Okay? Now, what the industry you do, or we do? So, this is kind of like you put a chicken nuggets or chicken leg meat. Go to your home uh, refrigerator, like minus 10 degrees Celsius. You put it there, it slowly decreases the temperature. So, the crystal will be forming, forming, forming. So, what the industry do? Try to avoid the crystal. They add a second one. They decrease the temperature dramatically, all of a sudden, called supercooling. Or another word they're using a lot called the flash cooling, or flash breathing. Because they want to lower down the temperature all of a sudden. Why? Because once the temperature is significantly decreased in a very short time, Instead of the crystal will be formed, they will form the nucleus. So so-called nucleation. And the nucleus usually they will form in those small nu uh, nuclear in the crystal and they call it like a seeding, like you put the seeds in there to prevent the three dimension regular lattice comes up. So that's what they usually trying to do is do a flashing or super flashing freezing or super coring to try to avoid the general crystal, but let the food products generate nuclear issue as those small nuclear like a seeds in the products prevent crystal formation as much as they can. Okay. Now. Why they wanted to do that? Because instead of to form crystal, there is another type of the form will be generated, which is called glass form. But be careful. The glass form has to be in a relatively small size of the molecular products. So in a small, size of the uh, molecules. Let's say sugars. The fresh breathing could create which is called glass form. Glass form, this is called A-Q-U-E-A-S, aqueous status. It is irregular. The damage will be limited. Okay. Uh, I want to make sure this, uh, uh, so, so. Amorphous status and the, it's irregular, so the damage will be limited. Now, what they do? It's another figure. This temperature, the x axis is temperature, y axis is like um, so called is uh, nucleation of crystal. Uh, lysization. So this temperature here is melting point. It's Tg. 
this is a glass forming temperature. This is a melting temperature. Now what happened? Just below the melting temperature, the crystal formation is very high. So it's like that. That's a crystal line. Once you use a flashing freezing or super cooling, the temperature dramatically decreased. At the temperature, which is called glass forming, the crystal forming will be limited, and the most of the dominant is nuclear issue. The nuclear issue will be contribute to have a glass forming. So this is nuclear issue. Okay. Now, when the temperature will reach the maximum crystallization rate, which is another line, right in the middle. Right in the middle, this is the maximum crystallization rate. Why well, I want to draw this? I want to measure here. When you just uh, below the melting temperature, this is crystal line, which indicates the amount. How many crystal will be had? What is made in the middle of this temperature? At this temperature, the rate to generate the crystallization is a maximum. You know the difference between amount and the rate? Weight is like a speed, like how you drive a car, how fast it is. Another one which means how many distance you already drive. Is that right? You drive the 100 miles does not mean you're driving very fast. Does not mean you're driving 100 miles per hour. You can drive only 10 miles, but you're driving really fast. You can reach 150 miles per hour. So I just want to mention the difference between the line here. Is this is a rate and that is amount. Okay. okay so this is something to we try to avoid the crystallization when the nucleation because we want a glass form. Now, in our real life, we did try to do that. Okay, we try to do that. How we do it? We using flashing pasteurization. We using flashing freezing. That is called cryoprotection. At the same time, we also add some of the ingredients. To it. That is called cryoprotectants. Uh, what is the example for that? Glycerol is an example. 